G'day, g'day everyone, welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. We are continuing today in our five-star Legendary Zombies Hero series, taking a look at the Legendary Yellow Hero, Billy Bob, the Undead Farmer. So, Billy Bob is available today from the Zombie Outbreak Portal, uh, which appears once every 12 weeks. It is on a monthly time slot, but it alternates with two other events, so we only see it once every three months. The zombie family has a bit of a convoluted past. Originally, there were only four heroes as part of the game, uh, which was achievable or attainable, sorry, uh, from cashing in these zombie badges, which you got from the 20 wave uh, zombie spec op we still get every now and then. Um, but in May 2021, during version 33, uh, SGG basically overhauled the entire zombies thing and essentially stripped those zombie badges out of the game and added in the discrete 30 stage event we see today. Um, and then basically took the four original heroes, chucked in 14 new heroes, um, and then essentially pushed that out to the public. So today, the portal though, it does feature two additions as beyond that version 33 update. So in September 2022, um, some additional heroes were added and again in March 2023. Uh, Billy Bob himself, he is the OG five-star um, zombie hero. So he was first released back in like 2019 or something, like something long time ago, um, alongside Manfred, Spud, Lindsay, and Roberto were the original heroes. Um, so there were actually five of them, sorry, not four. Uh, but anyway, Billy Bob is the OG zombie uh, hero. Uh, the portal itself today, we do have a 1.2% chance to get a zombie legendary hero or legendary zombie hero. Um, there are no featured odds, so the uh, portal is slightly lower in its total odds compared to some of the other um, portals that have both featured and unfeatured odds. Um, but to put that in perspective, if you were to do one point, uh, sorry, if you were to do a hundred summons in this portal, um, from that 1.2% chance, you would have a 70.1% probability of drawing any of the legendary. Uh, zombie heroes, um, but if you're going after someone specific like Billy Bob, for example, you would only have a 10.3% probability across those 100 summons of getting that specific hero, so not the greatest odds in the end. If we flip over to my roster and we have a look at the support class heroes, uh, sorry, Sentry. There he is. Uh, we can see this is Billy Bob's artwork. So he is the undead farmer. So naturally he's got the um, the overalls uh, as well as the plaid shirt. Um, he's got some boots on as well and, and the trucker's hat. So he looks pretty mad, which is, I guess, if we're taking the farmer maggot style thing where he's got hobbits in his field eating his carrots, um, you'd be pretty angry then as well. But anyway, that's, that's Billy Bob's artwork. Um, feel free to pause it if you wish. Um, but otherwise, we shall continue having a look at the rest of his special skill and his card. So, uh, Billy Bob, as we sort of seen, he is a member of the zombie class hero, so, uh, or zombie family um, of heroes. So, this means that he does have an inherent minus 50% or 50% reduction um, in uh, damage from turn based status ailments, um, such as bleed, poison, um, burn, all that sort of thing. They're going to do minus 50% or 50% less damage. There's also a stat bonus to their attack stats if you have multiple unique heroes in the battle. So there is a 3, 6, 9, or 12% attack bonus for having 2, 3, 4, or 5 unique zombie heroes in the battle. So notably, they do have to be unique heroes. It can't be two copies of Billy Bob. It's got to be two different heroes, like comboing Billy Bob with Ember or Hatchet as two different examples. In terms of his personal stats, Billy Bob has 617 attack, 744 defense, and 1,439 HP. So there is a fairly substantial skew going from that attack stat towards both the defense and HP stats. Um, they are both inflated by a considerable margin um, compared to his base, like the, the even stat distribution. So... Um, it is worth pointing out as well, his power is a bit reduced, uh, it's 680, compared to uh, the more modern heroes like Topaz coming in at 742. All that means is that his overall stat distribution is a bit reduced, because the power is just a, a total of their stat distribution, essentially. Um, his charge speed is set to 40, which is slow speed, and requires 12 tiles to charge, or 6 ghosted tiles. 
Uh, the speed brake occurs at 43 speed, so it does need a plus three improvement, um, which you can do using just like literally any of the speed guns in yellow. You've got, there's a three star gun, which gives you plus three, but more realistically, um, you've got the plus seven speed improvement from the four star Tris Vector, or there's a plus six improvement that comes from the five star Ragnarok Vantage. The double speed brake requires plus 10, which is not possible in the current state of the game. Um, yellow, unfortunately, does not have a plus 9 speed gun, uh, which means that you can't get this double brake on Billy Bob. Uh, to do that double brake, um, as I said, you would need to get to speed 50, um, which would be the plus 9 speed gun, as well as the class node. But as I said, there's no plus 9 yellow gun, so the speed node is of no relevance because you can get the speed brakes quite easily the single speed brake quite easily otherwise on the topic of his class uh, i did mention a little bit of back but billy bob is a member of the sentry class which grants him the chance to armor up and gain five percent of his health as armor after receiving damage from any source i don't really mind this perk um for the single hero because the damage can be any source as i mentioned it can be minions it can be tiles skills dot fiends you name it if it does damage to billy bob it can proc that armor up talent the downsides are that it is only once per turn so it doesn't matter how many instances of damage you might take you can only get one armor up per turn the other real downside is if we look at the comparable skill uh, or class talent which is the medic talent this gives the healing spray to all allies where the armor up only gives armor to the single hero so that is a little bit of a letdown as well in the end uh, in terms of a emblem path Generally speaking, I would not advise putting emblems on Billy Bob. I think that most any of the other Sentry class heroes are better value, including most of the four star options as well. If you are going to put emblems on Billy Bob because you either don't have options or for whatever reason you like him, um, I would probably go the route of a um, HP and defense path just to try to increase his survival even further. So HP is the priority because as a counter-attacking hero, you don't want, you want a higher health pool to be able to draw down on for, for the bonus damage um, and more defense will ultimately reduce the damage. But in terms of what the path would look like, uh, it would be going the HP as the priority, defense as the secondary. So any side that's got HP and defense will take it. Any side that has only HP on it uh, will take that as the alternative. So that would sort of be the path that I would follow. 18 would be the end of it. I wouldn't pick up the 2% at 19 um, and definitely wouldn't be spending the 1500 emblems required to get him to plus 20. Ultimately, as I said, I wouldn't put emblems on, on Billy Bob at all, but if you were to put them on him, this would be the path that I would follow or advise following. Heading back to the portal and we can take a look at his special skills. So his special skill is titled Fear the Farmer. And at level 10 skill and 40 charge speed, I went past him, uh, it will apply a counter-attack buff to the caster and nearby allies, which returns 125% of damage received for three turns. It will then also apply a plus 140 defense buff to the caster and nearby allies for three turns, as well as applying a plus 140 attack buff to the caster and nearby allies for three turns. So let's take a little bit more of a detailed look at each of those elements. Um, Billy Bob is another of those heroes there's very few of them in the game that doesn't actually have either a heal or a damage there's not many of them um, but billy bob is one of them so my usual flow of these reviews is a little bit disrupted but in saying that um, we're still going to dive into each of these elements so we'll start with the counter attack so the counter attack is the caster and nearby allies counter attack with 125 percent of the damage received for three turns so for those of you who are unfamiliar with how counter attack works uh you are very fortunate. Uh, awesome work for you. For everyone else, uh, you would understand that counterattack, essentially, any damage that Billy Bob or his nearby allies take, 125% of that figure will return to wherever the damage originated from. So for special skills, this is the caster. For um, slash attacks, it's whoever did the damage. For tiles, uh, it is applied to all of the heroes of that color. Minion strikes go back to wherever the, uh, their owner is. Um, the only things that are really exempt from counterattack are DOT, fiend damage, because both of those, the owner of the ailment or the fiend is Billy Bob, um, but also support attacks because they're for whatever reason exempt from any effect, uh, essentially. 
Um, so yeah, the 125% itself, it is low. Um, most counter-attackers are 145%. There are a couple others that are 125%, but these are the vanilla heroes. Um, so Rana and Flint, these guys are also 125%. Um, Billy Bob is the only other one. Every other counter-attacker in the game does 145%. Even the three-star option in Piston, he does 145%. The three-turn duration is also, well, it is fairly standard. Uh, there are two heroes that do more, so Piston does five turns, uh, Variant Face-Off does four turns, but otherwise, all the counter-attackers in the game, uh, they do three turns of duration. Uh, the other thing to note is that because it is obviously a buff, um, it can be um, removed by Dispel or the Demolition Shell Shock, and can be stolen, it can be blocked, and all that sort of thing. But ultimately, at the end of the day, there is something that is quite immensely satisfying with watching an enemy hero, particularly AoE heroes, absolutely nuke their HP by hitting counter-attack. So 125%, it's less than what we would expect from most counter-attackers, so we are losing out a bit there, but yeah, end of the day, it is still counter-attack, so it is still a bit of fun on attack situations. Moving on from the counter-attack, we get to the attack and defense buff. So I'll compare these at the same time or look at these at the same time because they're the same number. So um, the caster and nearby allies, they get plus 140 attack as well as plus 140 defense uh, for three turns. So both of these stat bonuses, they are static numbers. Uh, they are 140 full stop. It's not 140%, which would be really awesome. Um, so because they're static, it is unideal. It means there is no scaling that will happen with further power creep in the game. Uh, it won't scale with weapons. It won't scale with emblems. It is always going to be 140 attack and defense. If Billy Bob is at a 10 out of 10 skill, if he's not at 10 out of 10, it will be substantially less as well, which is also worth pointing out. Um, so if we were to take that um, number, that 140, and try and translate it to a percentage. Uh, so for Billy Bob himself, if we ran him in battle and we had equipped the Talon Tag 21, it's a vanilla gun, it's not a great gun, but it's a vanilla weapon, um, that will give you, uh, what's the exact figure? Sorry, I'll just pull it up. It will give you 223 attack and 220 defense. Um, so it's a crit chance and a health bonus is the two perks on the, the Talon Tag 21. So anyway, with that, that bonus uh, stats, the 140 works out as being just a 17.1% attack buff and a 14.9% defense buff. All right. If we looked at some newer heroes, say the latest 10 heroes added to the Neon City portal, with a 200 attack and defense, so less than what a 5-star weapon would give you, so with these bonuses, it's just a 15.3% attack buff and a 15.1% defense buff. If we expanded it out and had a look at the average five-star hero equipped with a 200 attack and defense gun, it is a 15.9% attack and defense buff. So not great when we look at heroes that do percentage-based effects. They're giving out 35 to 50% is what their skills work out as being. Like 15% compared to 35, like that's rough. Like you look at defense... Um, bonuses as i said you can see an attack bonus on someone like clara it's 46 percent like that's massive compared to just the 15 percent that billy bob is giving so yeah static bonuses they really they really just suck like there's no way around it it's it's hard to to say just how outclassed these effects are like we're talking double if not triple the damage bonus or damage reduction that you'd get from a percentage-based effect compared to Billy Bob's status effect or static effects. So overall, Billy Bob is a bit of a lackluster hero. At the time of his release, the counter-attack percentage, it was in keeping with all the other instances. And honestly, even today, it it, it ain't that bad. Like 20%, it's 125% versus 145%. It is lower but you're probably not going to ultimately see too, too much difference um, if you weren't specifically looking for it in, in the battle. His attack and defense buffs, unfortunately, are static numbers, and they were poor. It's a poor concept at this time of his release, and it's only become worse um, today as more and more powerful heroes get released. It doesn't help either that he's got a slow speed. He's also got limited range of effects. It's only to the caster and nearby uh, allies, which doesn't really go anywhere towards accounting for the the lessened special skill so 
I mean, ultimately, what Billy Bob needed was speed. He needed a lot more for his speed, or he needed more speed itself. So either he kept the 40 charge speed and got like damage, AoE 5 effects, charge control, something more for having such a slow speed, or his speed needed to be so much quicker. Like we're talking up into the four, like maybe even the 50s, like 55 to 58, I'd say, would probably be about where his stats should land him or in his skills should land him. But as he is, I, I just he, he's just not worth it, not in my opinion. So for Billy Bob's grading, um, it is pretty harsh. So for war and raid attacks, I'm going to give him a D grade. He's usable as a counter-attack hero, but... The, the rest of his skill, like he's only doing counter attack. He's not doing anything more. So it's fun to use counter attack, but not at his speed and not at his, the rest of his skills. For the War Machines, I'm going to give him a D minus. He doesn't do anything really for War Machines. He does give a slight defense and attack buff, but like I said, there's better options. Like hell, even the, the combat boost and the attack bo boost w battle items they give a better attack and defense bonus than what Billy Bob does. Like, that's where it's at. The battle items give better bonuses than Billy Bob. So there's no point to having him on a war machine. In eventing, it's exactly the same thing. There's no reason to use Billy Bob in events at all. Like, the, the battle items give more status bonuses. He's not contributing anything. So don't worry with the events. So a D minus there as well. On the war and raid defenses, I'll give him a D plus. I guess you could possibly put him in as a flank, maybe even a tank with his chunky stats, but in either position, there are a lot better yellow options. Like you can pick most other yellow options and they'll function as good, if not better, in the tank or flank position. In the three tournament settings, so bloody battle, I'm gonna keep him at a D grade for attack and a D plus for defense. For the buff boosters, this is probably where he shines the most because he does output three buffs for himself and his nearby allies. So that is a 60% attack bonus for himself and nearby. So I'll give him a C plus for attack and a C plus for defense. Um, and then finally, we have the charge attack tournament. So this is where his speed is improved from 40 up to 65. So it is a big speed improvement. Um, so again, I'm going to give him a C plus for charge tournament attacks and a C plus for the charge tournament defense. So overall, that comes out as being a D grade for Billy Bob's overall attack grade and a C minus for his overall defense grade. And that about concludes the content that I have for this review of Billy Bob. As always, these are just my personal thoughts and opinions on these heroes. Uh, I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback on them, so please feel free to jump down to the comment section of the video. Leave me a note. I love reading and try to reply to as many of you as I can. If you did find this video to be useful, helpful, and all of that, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, but most importantly, share the video around, because if this sort of thing is useful for yourself, chances are it's also going to be useful to the other people you play with as well. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining me. I do hope that I will see you again soon in another video, but until then, good luck, stay safe, and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.